Alright guys, my name is Amanda Goblin and today we're going to be counting down the top 10 most powerful weapons from the Burning Crusade expansion. So I've decided that for this video I am not just going to talk about all of the weapons that are the most powerful at the end of a Burning Crusade, there will be different weapons from different raid tiers in the video. And I try to talk about each and every single kind of weapon, you know, caster weapons, healing weapons, range weapons, one-handers, two-handers and all that kind of thing. Just before we jump in guys, apparently only 11% of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel, so I would appreciate if people did actually quickly subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to see more content like this. But anyway, let's jump in. So the first weapon we have on this list is Dragon Maw, which is a very cool looking mace with a literal dragon head on it. So you obtain this by doing blacksmithing, levelling up your blacksmithing and spending an immense amount of money or time to actually craft it in the first place. You actually do need the Hammersmith specialization on your character as well because it's a bind on pick up of, um, item so you can't just like buy this from somebody else. You have to have blacksmith leveled up yourself. And a proc effect on it is to increase your haste by 210 for 10 seconds and this is why it's extremely desired because haste is an extremely valuable stat because it increases your melee white damage. The majority of your damage as a warrior enhancement shaman does come from your actual white damage and obviously the increased haste just means you're attacking faster and it also increases your rage generation and everything like that so it's a massive massive DPS boost. So every warrior and enhancement shaman should work to get these weapons basically as soon as the Burning Crusade launches you know farming money and farming the materials to get this weapon because it will cost you a lot of like money and time but it will last you probably about six months, even up to like just under a year, because this weapon is so powerful for so long. You may be replacing it at the end of tier five, but it'll probably last until tier six, especially as you can actually replace it by upgrading it to Dragon Strike with Never Vortexes that drop from tier five raids. For number two, we have Cataclysm's Edge. I'm not gonna lie, the main reason why it's on the list is because it's one of the coolest looking weapons in the game. A lot of people are still transmogging this weapon on retail today. This weapon was mainly used in PvP because of the equip effect that ignored enemy armor by 335, which meant that you could absolutely melt through casters and obviously have an increased damage buff to plate wearers and stuff like that. And obviously it had some ridiculous stats. For number three we have the weapon Legacy. So this is one of the best stat stick weapons for a hunter in the Burning Crusade, provided a huge range attack power bonus and it also had MP5 on it. It actually dropped from the Opera event in Karazam which meant you weren't always going to get this item because it depended on what which boss or which Opera event was actually going to spawn so it was actually quite difficult to obtain in that sense. But nonetheless, it just had the perfect stats for a hunter because, you know, it massively boosted their range DPS and also provided some cheeky mana regeneration. For number four, we have the Storm Herald. This has a very similar story to the first weapon on this list. You will need to level up your blacksmithing and get the Hammersmith specialization in order to craft this weapon and actually get it and start making some use out of it. At first glance, Storm Herald just kind of looks like a gimmicky PvP item, but what you have to look at is that weapon speed. It's a 3.8 weapon speed, which is a ridiculously slow weapon speed. I don't think anything ever comes close for, you know, even in Wrath of Lich King, there's no 3.8 weapon speed weapon as far as I know. So this weapon was mainly used by a rep paladin because most of their damage actually comes from weapon damage. Okay, and obviously a slow weapon increases your weapon damage. So things like Seal of Blood, the Judgment of Seal of Blood, Crusader Strike, you know, it's all based on weapon damage. So a slow weapon massively increased the damage of those abilities. Plus, if you stack this with Wind Fury Totem, it duplicate the damage even, even more and just snowball, snowball your DPS massively. It was also used by Arms, arms Warriors, but Arms Warriors are kind of rare in raids because they're only really brought for certain debuffs. But, um... They were obviously, they did obviously use this weapon in PvP because the amount of damage it provided for their one shot high damaging abilities was absolutely ridiculous. You could very easily one shot low geared people in their battlegrounds of this weapon. For number five, we have the Nightblade, which is an extremely rare weapon that drops from the Burning Crusade Raid Trash. I think it drops from mostly Karazhan and Tempest Keep, although it's so rare that the loot tables are a little bit inaccurate. So it has a, an a proc effect which causes your attacks to ignore 
435 of a target's armor for 10 seconds, but that can stack three times for a total of 1,305 armor ignored on the target. Okay, and you can combine this with a brutal gladiator's bone cracker, which that gives an extra 49 we weapon armor penetration, amongst other effects from your armor as well. So, armor penetration is a really underrated and really useful start in PvP because it obviously just allows you to melt through casters because they don't have a lot of armor to begin with, and then it massively increases your damage on plate wearing DPS and healers and stuff like that. And a proc effect on this weapon, it procced pretty frequently to the point where it would pretty much just be on your, you know, if whether you're playing, most likely going to be used by a rogue, this weapon. So the proc is practically active 100% of the time to the point where you're just refreshing that 1305 armor penetration buff. So for number 6 I've kind of cheated, I wanted to include stat stick items because obviously I wanted to include like every kind of weapon and what I found is that the Nax Rammer stat stick weapons are actually way better than at tier 4 raid items. So if you look at items like Wand of Fates and Doomfinger and then compare those stats to tier 4 best in slot stat stick weapons like the Trisful Wand of Ascendancy and the Veteran's Musket, the Nax gear actually provides a much better benefit. Okay, and this means that the Nax stat stick items even the one that you can get from Patchwork, which is pretty easy to obtain, are actually, they're just basically better. And they're going to last you, you know, all the way into Tier 5. The Tier 5 gear will replace Nax gear because it's massively better, but I just found, found it interesting that, um, you know, Classic WoW gear is actually, does provide better stats than TBC gear. For number 7, we have the Crystal Spire of Karabor. Now, this is an a healer mace that drops from the last boss of Black Temple, obviously Illidan. And what's interesting about this mace is it has an added effect of healing targets below 50% health with an extra 180 to 220 healing. So obviously this is great for raiding because it's just going to provide it a little bit of a cheeky extra heal but it's probably not going to be used that often in raiding to be honest. Where this weapon is really going to shine is obviously in PvP and Arena because you will be healing targets below 50% health more than you will be in a raiding environment. So yeah, very useful item for topping up your friends in arena. For number eight, we have the Gavel of Unearthed Secrets. So this is very useful for a number of classes, mainly Shadow Priest because, you know, priests can't use a sword, which is, means they can only get this spell power mace instead. You only have to get Exalted with Lower City, which is pretty easy to do because you can just farm Shadow Labyrinth and it doesn't really take that long at all. Now there's some debate in the prop Paladin community or between using the Blade of Wizardry um, and this weapon because of the weapon speed. Some people argue that Blade of Wizardry provides more aggro because it's a faster weapon, although in my experience the reason why I prefer the gavel is because each hit has an increased chance to proc Seal of Vengeance, which means that you know it's just going to be much easier to stack up those stacks of Seal of Vengeance, and I find that my seal twisting rotation is much easier to actually achieve. And basically, the long short, you know, short story is that I actually find that I actually generate more threat with this mace and obviously the added advantage of this mace is it provides a little bit of extra stamina a little bit of your you know increased health health pool so you really cannot complain but obviously you know if we're not talking about prop paladin we're talking about casters this is very useful for shadow priest it's useful useful for boomkins and it's also very useful uh, obviously the blade of wizardry is the pre red best in slot weapon also for you know warlocks and mages and these weapons will last you quite a while because there's only like a few good caster weapons that you can get from tier 4 raids. And you know, if you're very unlucky, this will probably last you until you're doing tier 5 raids. For number 9, we have the Vindicator's Brand. Now, this is one of the best weapons for a rogue to obtain because obviously of their sword spec, they do not opt for maces because they don't benefit from maces as much as a warrior. And mainly because of that hit chance, honestly, because it provides such a big amount of hit chance and hit chance is very valuable for any melee in the Burning Crusade. The only downside to this weapon is it can be very expensive or time consuming to obtain it because it requires 
Exalto Vialdo, which is one of the hardest reps to farm in the Burning Crusade because you're going to need to farm loads of marks of Sargaris and their uh, fell elements and stuff like that rather than just farming a dungeon over and over again. So that can be very, very expensive and very time consuming. And lastly, we have the Serpent Spine Longbow, which is one of the best in slot range weapons for a hunter that dropped from the last boss of SSC Lady Vash. Even though it was best in slot, most hunter, we hunter weapons ever burned a crusade, the hunters, well people in the human hunter community actually didn't like the weapons that much because in a very frustrating way it kind of counteracted and went against the, function the functionality of the one button macro. It's kind of, I've explained it more in a, in a recent video, but basically it's not the optimal amount of free weapon, free second weapon speed is not the optimal weapon speed um, for a hunter's DPS, and 2.7 is technically the best, which is why uh, for Andrils is, you know, the legendary weapon that drops from the last boss of the Sunwell is technically like the, one of the best hunter weapons for the, but, well, is the best hunter weapon for TBC. And it's mainly because of the weapon speed rather than the stats and the, you know, everything like that. But anyway guys, that is the end of the video. My name is Metagoblin, to my next video, ciao.